So Falcon still a very fat, uh, one of the fastest characters in the game. Um, just very different from his Smash 4 incarnation. Even though his moveset is almost identical to what he was before, he doesn't really have those down throw setups anymore. It's either the knockback is too high or there's too much uh, end lag on the down throw, one of those two. So you don't really get the same setups you did before. Like, you can get down throw in there, but then getting the movement afterwards is kind of different. Right. Yeah, that's because, you know, before you'd have, like, Falcons, they would just get, get the hits in, and then as soon as he got the wheels turning, it was impossible to stop them. Yeah. Uh, speaking of getting the wheels turning right here, Master Mario... Wow, he got the wheels turning real fast right there. Uh, part of that to blame is uh, Pokemon Stadium. Pokemon <laughs> Stadium having the lowest ceiling in the uh -huh. game. So you're definitely more susceptible to <laughs> the Mario up B combos like that. And of course, in this game, is a much more volatile kill move right. than it was in Smash 4. So you got to be careful about and, that. Oh, uh, you might have a repeat. He's got it. He got him frame trap. And he's just all up in his head right now. It's uh, damage control for a fantastic head. Oh, the Raptor boost doesn't quite come out, but the Fortil is able to continue that and gets that pivot into the F smash. The people's elbow <laughs> equalizing the match. Uh, you still got some uh, uh, percentage to make up, but, you know, if you want to make a statement with your first stock, that's the way to do it. Yep. Uh, spacing with the people's elbow is actually a little bit harder in this game because before in Smash 4, you Falcon like actually stuck his elbow up even more, but in uh, this game he kind of just uh, stays in place while doing it. He doesn't do that little step forward. And uh, of course, Master Mario closing out that last stock with the tried and true Mario up smash, and the combo train just keeps on rolling. Reverse up air, trying to get something going after that, and we got a Nair starter, but again, just not able to quite get that quite connector. Oh! Let's go, Master! Yeah, we got some pop offs in the crowd. It's uh, it's like a carryover of the energy from SoCal Chronicles uh, rolling through the uh, rolling through the building. You get some pizza into people at nighttime, and uh, it's all fun and games. Yep. Let's see what adaptations Fantastic Ed's able to make. Uh, we got Final Destination, which I, I think I agree with that. You know, trying to get some platforms out of the game so he's not able to carry as far. So let's see, maybe a character switch. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Roy is definitely a little bit different from Krom. Uh, yeah, well, the biggest thing is probably the recovery and the sword itself. Right. But the implications of that, usually what happens is that Roy, because of those weak hitboxes, elicits tech chase situations more often than uh, Krom does, who has that pure power uh, going for him to put them off stage all the time. So we're going to have to see if um, he's able to take advantage of those tech chase situations and you know try to bait out a roll or something to be able to get that sweet... Uh, spot on that forward smash. And not only that, with Captain Falcon, he was kind of, you know, from a neutral standpoint, he was going to have to outmaneuver Master Mario in order to really get any traction, but with, with Roy and the sword coming out, he's able to actually play, you know, kind of the, the wall archetype and just kind of cut off the stage and uh, stuff. And what, what he's doing right now and controlling the stage and keeping Master Mario in quite a bit of disadvantage in the corner. Yep. All right, reverse forward tilt. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You, uh, He got the Wii hitbox on that, and that elicited a tech chase reaction. If he could have uh, got him the right reaction off yeah. of him, then he would have been able to seal out the stock. And again, like that, just being able to ledge trap like that is so important as a character like Roy. Master Mario trying to battle back, but uh, Fanta, maybe a miscue. I don't know. You had so much advantage in throwing it out with the heavy read. This is uh, not Street Fighter. <laughs> you only need to run up Dragon Punch <laughs> no, immediately. <yeah. laughs> I think it was just kind of feeling himself there, maybe hoping to get the stock first this time around. Yeah. Because he definitely had a very early loss in that first game. Yeah, I guess you're trying to, you know, if you're down a game, you're trying to get some momentum. That's one way to go about it. Just go for the wake-up dragon punch. But it ended up costing him. That's two of them in a row. Yep, wake-up DP. Not really going to work <laughs> over here. Uh, traditionally in fighters, if the, the big weakness of DPs is if you whiff them or you get blocked, then you're kind of you're done for. But a reverse up tilt. On the ledge, that'll work just fine. And we're even. So if you're if you're fantastic yet, you just want to go back to work with what you were doing before, get your sword out, not let Master Mario get the wheels turning. Well, we got the anti-air. Oh, but actually got a trip out of it. It was a solidify grab. It attempted to get the chase on the pickup up air, but didn't quite get what he wanted. And now the situation is reversed. Fantastic get off stage and disadvantage. Able to work his way out of the corner. Fantastic game, looking like he's a little bit uh, less in control with Roy than he was with Captain Falcon earlier. Kind of looks like he's getting struck in, stuck in his frame data uh, when he ever throws out a whiff move. But on the other side of that, it looks like, you know, Master Mario having a little bit more difficulty kind of corralling and uh, playing the neutral game against Roy. But a lot of that's just by virtue of the sword being on the field and covering so much area. Right. Able to get in and shield grab right there, though. Back throw still not going to be able to do it. Uses his jump early, but he's going to be just fine, actually. Master Mario not going to be able to get that right read in. Ooh. 
he really went for that one there. And that actually cost him trying to get back to the stage, but that uh, back air on the ledge get up is going to be able to seal out the stock. Oh, Master Mario almost had a big opening right there. Maybe he's got it right here. Let's see what he's able to do. Try to do some Smash 4 stuff. Dare is a fair. Not quite going to work out this time around. They play in the neutral back and forth. Fantastic Ed's got to get the stock at some point soon. Uh, any more damage is going to be almost too little too late. I think uh, smidges of greatness actually coming from Ed, and, you know, throwing out those hitboxes against the, the Mario Fireballs, for example. Whoa! Oh, and a pivot force. Again, like that's the profit <laughs> calling out those hitboxes. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, like a lot of uh, projectiles in this game actually have low priority, so if you throw out a hitbox on them, then uh, it actually is, is null for the, re for the rest of its duration. So and espe especially with uh, Mario as a character that tries to chase the fireball in, if you end up uh, breaking through the priority on the fireball, you hit both of them, the, the projectile and the character. Yep. Ooh, try to get a... Get uh, that back throw. <laughs> yeah, Tomahawk back throw. Didn't quite work out, though. Fantastic Ed still on his last stock, 148%. One big opening just like that is going to be it. That's the set. 